Is there a spec sheet going around for that thing that says capacitive touch on it? I, uh, I saw some people saying that that was in there, but I guess it's not clear at all. <coughs> you would figure that it would not have something like that if they're trying to have full functionality in both formats, right? It's a very back-to-basics approach in a weird way. Like, I guess it is and it isn't, right? I mean, it does both things, which, you know, by this point should not be a surprise to anyone. Uh, talking about this for like the past year now. Um, but in terms of just like, Yo, how are you going to play video games on this thing? You look at it and go like, oh, you play video games the way you play video games. Could have touch and be second screen on TV. That's, so, my understanding is that the gut, I mean, for it to be a portable, all the guts of that thing have to be in the unit itself. So at that point, you're like, you're not using the dock, but you're using a bunch of cables to connect it to a TV, which doesn't seem like something they would do. I guess maybe it could wirelessly talk to the dock, but they would, I, I, that doesn't, that doesn't seem likely to me. You think the center connector on the joy pad grip is a touchpad? I, mm. Well, keep in mind that it also supports a pro controller. And that the, it seems like the likely scenario would be you dock that thing and then pick up the pro controller and play that way. So I, I guess, you know, I, I, I don't think a touchpad is, is, is a good substitute for a touchscreen. Uh, but yeah, I don't, yeah. Oh, sorry, Joy-Con grip. You're right, I'm fucking that up already. I'm pumping some gas. I think that thing looks good, even if uh, the games do kind of represent a back-to-basics approach of Hey, play these games on a D-pad and or on, a, on analog sticks and and so on and so forth. I think actually that's probably I, I think Nintendo kind of probably needs to rein it in a little bit and just say like, all right, let's just focus on the people that are likely to care about this sort of thing. They might not want super gimmicky, weird stuff in their games right now. This might not be the right time for that. So instead, they, you know, they, they put all that into the nature of the console itself, right? Or you can, you can take it with you. It's both. It's, it's a hybrid. And, and focus it there. It doesn't necessarily impact the games unless they... Well, you know, I mean, it could, right? But it would impact the games the same way like that having a portable would. It would impact the games that you could do some location-based stuff, or some street pass style stuff. Uh, build some things around the idea of having more than one of them in the same place. Um, as opposed to, hey, the controls are crazy, or hey, there are multiple screens, or hey, oh, here's this and that. So. But yeah, you know, like I've been saying for a while, I just think it's it's the smartest move because it centers all of their game development on one device instead of two. You know, you think about the number of people that ran into situations where they bought one and not the other, and they're like, man, I'd really like to play that game, but it's for the other Nintendo thing. And sometimes those decisions just, I don't know, they felt arbitrary to which games went, went to which platforms and especially like virtual console stuff right I mean it was just like that shit was a mess so this gives them an opportunity to rally around one thing uh, which I think they need I, I you know the, the Wii U no one fucking cared the Wii U did not catch on or as much as it has one of my favorite games of probably the last five years on it, uh, you know, the 3DS was a different story. I think you know the, the portable story plays better worldwide. 
obviously, you know, that's, that's the reason why Monster Hunter games keep not coming out on consoles, right? It's because the, the place of Monster Hunter, people don't want to play it on console. So this lets them build one version of that game and please everyone, theoretically. Or they'll fuck it up in such a way they please no one. I mean, that's, that's always a possibility, right? Um... But yeah, you know, it's it's smart for that reason. Here's the device you get to play Nintendo games. Period. End of fucking story. Simple. All of Nintendo's games, with the exception of whatever comes out on phones, probably don't count anyway. You know, comes out on this device. That's meaningful and that's powerful. That's, uh, you know, that's what you want. You want a place to play Nintendo games. Like, there's still people that are just like, man, what about the third-party support? Like, fucking, who fucking cares? Like, if you care about third-party support, you're not, like... This is not the, the company for you. This is not the console you're looking for. It's, it hasn't been about that for them. It's up there. and Yeah, I'm sure they'll make some games for it. And then if it, whether they sell or not... You know, maybe if they sell well, maybe they'll make some more. If not, it'll be just like everything else. Those go away. And like, all right, we were there for launch. Enjoy Armored Edition, Batman, Mass. Here's the, here's our version of Mass Effect, I guess. We sent our dev kits back. See ya. Um, like, I don't expect Nintendo to get any better at that stuff. Because uh, I think the people that want those games already bought consoles to play those games on. So instead, you know, if you just look at it, it's like, hey, well, here's the here's the tax I'm going to pay, pay to play Nintendo games. All right, sure. And now you only have to pay it once instead of twice. Congratulations, everyone wins. And then, yeah, at some point, the rest of it becomes software and services. Like, you know, will they actually make this N- Nintendo Network stuff or the... the their new account stuff good or will it be a Nintendo like solution I think the name's alright the name is at least evocative of its capabilities which you know it seems it's sensible I still think NX actually sounds cooler but whatever There were more games in that thing than I thought there would be, too. I, I figured that they would just show... Like, I, I figured it would be way more focused on... Well, I guess it was very focused on the movement, right? I mean, taking it places, docking it, undocking it, all that other stuff. I just didn't think that they would show as many different games in that sequence. I figured it would be more like, okay, here's Zelda, because we've already announced that. Also, you know, I think if this thing, well, yeah, I guess, I guess we don't know one way or the other, but it, it, the, if this thing was going to have a touchscreen in it, then Zelda on Wii U would have touchscreen controls. Uh, but that demo at E3, did, like, very definitively did, did not. So, I guess what I'm saying is when it comes to Nintendo Switch, I am about it, about it. At this point, I mean, yeah, if you think about the way the Wii U went for them in terms of it just being a complicated thing to announce and explain because of the way they named it, because of, you know, all the confusion around whether it was an add-on for the Wii and all that other stuff. Like, I wonder if that informed part of this. Just like, let's just make something that's actually really fucking easy to explain. Like, ah, it's a tablet and you can dock it and play it on TV if you want. It'll do both. All right. Thank you. Good night. When I first heard about it, someone described it as NVIDIA Shield-like. I wonder if all of their account linking stuff ever gives them a definitive look at all of your digital purchases like if they were to finally do the right thing with virtual console stuff and have that all that stuff carry forward 
Um, it seems like they've fucked that end of things up enough times now that, that maybe they could finally get it right here. So I wonder when they'll come out and start talking more frankly about what those games are uh, for the Switch. I wonder if they get into the Switch branding at all in the game names, if it just becomes Super Mario Switch. And they've got some fucking light, light world, dark world, hit the Switch to flip the world upside down type shit in there. I wonder if they launch in March with NBA 2K17. Like, you would assume so, but then that also sets 2K... Like, if 2K wanted to continue that series on that platform, that then means they're shipping the next one, like, six or seven months later. Not that that has ever stopped a publisher from taking advantage of a launch situation. Uh and then trying to sell you the same shit or the, the follow-up less than a year later, but uh, but that never that never seems like a fantastic idea. I guess, like, you know, my concerns for that thing is, I, you know, I just don't... Like, looking at the, the controllers, none of them look especially comfortable. Like, the split D-pad button thing doesn't seem like the sort of thing you'd want to use to play fighting games. The Their pro controller looks like a weird third-party Bluetooth controller for Android tablets. Like, in the, in the few shots they showed it in, it's like, ah, that doesn't... It doesn't look like an awesome controller. You know, maybe it'll feel fine, like, right? I, you know... I guess I didn't really like the Wii U Pro Controller very much either. Or the Wii Pro Controller, for that matter. Also, what is that device? Like, when you think about it... To kind of, like, shoot a few more holes in its third-party potential. You know, there are a lot of big games now out there that are very online focused, right? You know, very into the idea of always being connected to the internet. The Division, Destiny, that sort of stuff. So, you know, the, the idea of a system that, like, by its very design is not really set up to always be connected to the internet, uh you know, probably doesn't bode well for those sorts of games on that platform. I don't, I don't know that that's like, I don't think that's a huge deal. I think it was like, oh man, finally I can play Destiny on a Nintendo platform. Like, no, that's not. That's not end of the world type shit, right? But at the same time, like, just in terms of like, hey, here's some games we could port around. <coughs> Or, hey, here, here are games games as a service that are making us a lot of money. Uh, you know, you oftentimes get that always online thing alongside that. So, you know, a device like this just doesn't fit with those types of games. But yeah, I think, you know, it's, just, it's one of those things that kind of cements it, really, in, in a very Nintendo-like way. Uh, that is not, that is not your sole gaming device if you really like video games. I don't think that's a surprise. I don't think that's necessarily, like, a huge negative. Uh, but, you know, it's just, it's its own thing. It's tempting to want to, like, try to compare it to the console platforms. And certainly some games will travel between them in, in port form. But at the end of the day, it's just not really... Uh, 
there's just not enough to it on its own. From a power perspective and, and all that sort of stuff, likely functionality, you know, all that sort of stuff. Like it's it's just not really in the same lane. And that's good. You know, Nintendo chasing after what Microsoft and Sony are doing. I don't think that they could play that game. I don't think that they would do well at it. I don't think that it suits their games, the types of games that they usually make. I don't think necessarily require them to play the power game. Never has. You know, so a device that's Wii U-esque uh, in power, power power range, or that there's something that is kind of very decidedly under current consoles, though not necessarily in a ways in ways that'll matter. Uh, yeah. I think it'll work as a handheld in the markets that prefer handhelds, and it'll work well enough docked to a TV uh, for markets that don't give a fuck about handhelds. <coughs> that said, it'd be nice if I could buy a version that was just static and forced connection to a TV. Like, I don't, I don't need to take this thing with me. I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff. Sell me one for a hundred dollars cheaper. Don't put a fucking screen on it, you know? And then you just get into like, well, what's the battery life on it? All that stuff. Let's get into what really matters though. Right here, right now. Yeah, there we go. You really hope the display doesn't have to be in the toaster for a display on the TV because that was. I, I bet that that's exactly what it is. I bet that that thing absolutely has to be docked to use. Because then they create a bunch of weird usage scenarios about like around dual screen stuff, and that seems like it would be poorly supported because you would have a lot of developers that would go like, "Well, am I going to go out of my way to support this weird fucking case?" of, like, someone hooking cables to it and sitting in front of their TV holding the full device? Or, you know, can it transmit the screen up to the TV while you're still using it? Like, maybe. Maybe it could do that, right? But who does that... If it's the same image, who cares? Like, getting developers to have to build their games in ways that support two screens and one screen sounds like a great way to get a bunch of very terrible dual-screen implementations, like poorly thought, hastily implemented, because who cares, most people aren't going to use it that way. I think it's the right device for the time. I think it's the right device for where Nintendo's at and where the world is at with handheld games, consoles, all that stuff. Like, that's, that's the right move for Nintendo to make. I don't think it's a move that puts them on top of the world and, you know, makes something that is, like, doing Wii-like numbers, but... I think it's a smart way for them to continue making their own hardware. They will make it easier to enjoy Nintendo's games. Fewer hardware platforms to buy. So in some ways, I guess I, guess I can see why some people would be a little disappointed, you know? Like, just with it not necessarily being innovative on the gameplay side. The way that some of their hardware has been as of late over the last decade or so. And yeah, yeah, that's, yes, maybe this does set the stage for them to, well, I guess it probably depends on how it goes, but you, you could see this being Nintendo's last hardware in some ways. You know, when you think about the the power range meeting in the middle between tablets, phones, and, and consoles. Like, people are not ready for that right now. People are not ready to play console games on their tablet. They just don't... The, the, it's all technically possible. You could Bluetooth a controller to your fucking tablet right now. But no developers support it. So maybe at some point that stuff does meet in the middle. Shit, man, maybe at some point, five years down the line, Nintendo just does a deeper deal with Apple and says, hey, uh, this is the Nintendo controller. Uh, We're making a bunch of games that support this thing. And I guess other Apple controller developers could too. I guess at that point, Nintendo doesn't need to be making that. 
<coughs> Apple has been spending a lot of time behind the scenes thinking about controllers and not announcing them for a good long time now. So, yes, the video game industry is crazy right now. That much is definitely true. Has been for a while. It's weird out there. There's money to be made, for sure. Like, business is booming, but in a lot of really weird ways. That's why you got a lot of people placing bets on VR things and... You know, it's just there's there's money all over the place. But yeah, I, you know that that's that's my that's my take on the whole thing. It's the right idea for right now. It's the it's the perfect idea for where Nintendo is at, for the types of games they're likely to make, for the type of business they are likely to attract. Like this is this is absolutely, I think, the right device. The right idea. <coughs> I don't think there's any other lane for them that makes sense right now. They couldn't go full mobile. The the expectations of mobile games and pricing and stuff like that just doesn't fit with the types of games they make. They're not going to go spend the money to do all the R&D to architect a full-on console that competes with PS4 and Xbox One. It's just not... A, a, a route to profitability right now. That's just not the way to go. They're not going to just double down on handheld stuff for handheld's sake. Because that stuff doesn't seem to be what people necessarily around the world want, even if it makes sense in Japan these days. It might not make sense in Japan forever. So they got a device that kind of covers all the bases. a lot of different use cases and some potentially fun functionality around the, you know, separating the controllers and playing simple games with, you know, two players on these weird split controllers. When a lot of this stuff kind of was getting described to me last year, you know, that was the interesting part of the, of the pitch was the idea that it would be one device for Nintendo. It would simplify their line, get all their studios working in the, in the exact same direction on the exact same platform. Now I just want to see a teardown of that Nintendo Classic thing and see what's in there. Actually, I feel like, didn't that stuff kind of get out? Like, what was under the hood of that tiny box? Would I play Mario Maker without a touchscreen? I mean, no, I guess not, you know? That's, that's not really... <coughs> a great way to make levels uh, if you can't touch the screen. So, yeah. But yeah, you know, so this this may very well dash my hopes of getting a sequel to that game, but that's okay. Right up until they turn the servers off for the Wii U version of that game, <laughs> then it's not okay anymore. Yeah, I just think putting a touch screen on that thing is is like is really strange because it it sets up this situation where um, the most fully featured and functional way to play is undocked, uh, which would be weird. Have they confirmed the power is in the tablet? Yeah, the the power has to be in the tablet because you undock it and walk away. But yes, everything everything I heard about that thing for a while now was was big on the idea of the power being in the in the tablet do you think you can charge it without ever plugging it in the dock I bet it's got a standard power port on it somewhere it, it would have to because if the idea is that you're going to take it with you places you're going to find yourself in a hotel room without the dock I mean, maybe they would fuck that up, but I think that would be, like, a profound mistake. That would be the sort of thing that they would encounter early on and go, Oh, wait, no, we totally have to make sure that the the port on the, the wherever power goes is something you can just plug into directly. It also looked a little larger than I thought it would be. Like, when you see people walking around with it in that bit, in 
<coughs> in there, like, oh, either this lady is incredibly tiny, or that thing is bigger than it seems. Still, it's cool that they were able to kind of convey the vast majority of what that thing does without really talking, you know? Like, hey, you know... Because even getting it described to me in vague terms by people who had, you know, seen it and stuff over the last year or so, it was just like, okay, I'm pretty sure I know exactly what you're saying, but can it do this? Can it do this? Can it do that? Like, doing it the way they did it, I think, it actually ended up being kind of smart. Because they just show it and you go like, oh, okay, all right, yep. Like, there are still some questions around some edge case functionality and stuff like that, but... They get the tone across. They get the vibe out there. All right. I'm here. Uh, y'all have a good day. And yeah, we'll see you later.